welcome to the next episode of the Adventures of Knowing Not. Today we're going to tackle the big issue we had with the engine, how it happened, what it happened, and how we fixed it. And I'm glad to say that issue is over. But before we get into it, let me give you a quick tour of the engine room so you get a feel for what it is, the type of equipment we're dealing with. Come on down. So. Here's the stairway down into the engine room, past the big electric control box, and the first thing any engine room tour should start with is, hi, is with the engines. These are uh, Cummins 480 horsepower, 8.3 liter engines. They're six cylinders. They have Bosch injection uh, fuel systems, as well as electronic controls, and, um, they're silky smooth when they're running well. Um, big diesels by Cummins. The transmissions are controlled by a ZF electronic transmission. And in fact, all of the controls on these engines are electronic. Um, so a really nice engine package. This little baby right here, that is the impeller for water, bringing water into the engine doesn't actually go right into the engine. It goes into this after cooler right here. Yep. And that, um, that, the, the, that cooler chills both the air and the coolant, uh, which runs through it. And then the, the, the chilled air, uh, as well as the, um, coolant runs through the engine. On this side, we have same engine. You can see I've got very limited headroom available to me. And trying to do any maintenance work on this side of this engine is not a good time. It is very difficult, especially that impeller replacement there. It's almost a completely blind operation. And having done it three times, I still don't know a good way to do it. Um, if you look down here, you'll see that all of the major Maintenance items are easily um, reachable in both cases. Uh, for both engines, you've got the um, oil filter, the fuel filter, and the uh, coolant filter, as well as the engine dipstick and the coolant fill, all in one place. Uh, real easy to get the um, get the maintenance done. Uh, you'll also see that we have a second fuel filter in terms of a Raycor system there. Um, so each engine has its own fuel filter. And speaking of fuel, you can see if you scan along there from the black box there all the way past the engine, that is one of the two 240-gallon fuel tanks, uh, 480 total gallons of diesel, aboard when full. Um, also there, Paula, if you uh, look over here, we've got our reverso oil change system. That is a um, system that will suck all the oil out of the engines, all three, the gen set as well as the two engines. Uh, sucks everything out in 10 to 15 minutes and will replace all of the oil in 10 to 15 minutes for all three engines. The trick to an oil change is the filter changes. That's where the time takes. And of course, right behind me here is our Onan 11.9 kilowatt marine gen set. This thing will run all of the air conditioners, the stove, everything all at the same time. We've never had a problem with it. She is a awesome little generator. And then looking over this way, Paula, further to the right, the blue unit there is our Victron 3000 inverter converter charger that uh, feeds the battery system. We have three um, lithium-ion lithium uh, batteries for a total of 600 amp hours of battery for the house AC system. Um, we don't need to show the batteries today, but they're all right here underneath this floor on the center line. Um, we have two black water tanks, each 40 gallons. Those are vacuum flush um, black water tanks. Um, and then um, looking forward, we have, um, well, sort of a mess because we have to keep all of the various supplies to change the oil, 
um, extra oil and extra um, different coolants. Um, so we have a very full engine room. Back here you'll find the air conditioning unit, the second 40 gallon uh, black tank and vacuum flush system, a 20 gallon um, water heater, and well, lo lots, lots more. Oh, water tanks up back in the back. Yep, the actual water tank fresh water for tank. fresh water. We have 140 gallons, yeah. and that's under the bed. Yes. So that is a quick tour of our engine room. Hope you enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, it's a good place to be on the knowing that. should say the engine room is usually a nice place to be, but things do break. And as you might have heard, in the middle of Lake Huron, uh, 55, 60 miles away from land in either direction, we had a major blowout of, of uh, as it turned out, a fuel injector. And so we had to go down to one engine, 516 feet of water. It was quite the ordeal. Uh, we headed into Tobermory, and we'll let the story uh, proceed from here. So what it started as a perfect day crossing um, Lake Huron from Rogers City to Tobermory has become somewhat of a bad day. Um, if you look here, you may or may not see that this engine is running and this engine is not. We were up on plane and about halfway across the lake the starboard engine started spouting oil clattering and clattering we don't know what it is so we shut her down and we're just running on one engine um we've still got about 13 miles to go to get to tobermory and to make matters a little bit worse it's gray Seas are picking up a little, and we've had flies all day long. Big old flies that look like that. And we've been batting them away. Plus, Paula's in a bad mood, aren't you, Paula? I was this morning. She was. Now, now that things have all gone to hell, she's in a good mood. <laughs> so anyways, that's the situation, and we will limp into Tobermory and hopefully be able to get a slip and try to figure out what's wrong with the engines. Hopefully it's not major, major, but it's it's not nothing. I'm going to need a mechanic and we're July 4th week, so we'll see what happens. Right, time to go in the engine room and see what the heck happened today. I, I went down in the middle of the lake and looked at it. It's not good. What I'm looking at is oil spatter all over the top of the engine, especially on the top of the heads. And I don't know what it would have caused it. It looks like it's coming right from like the second cylinder. It was making a horrible rattling noise. And all of this oil right in here, this is, this is not good. So we'll figure it out. It's, it's so time to do some problem solving. Look.
So this video is dedicated to my engineering friends at Bosch. I'm gonna call out a few. <clears throat> Alex, Mohammed, Brent, all my diesel buddies. So this Bosch pump and fuel system. Yeah, baby. So far I've taken off the um, engine computer, the Bosch engine computer, as well as um, the air pressure sensor and the fuel return line, which is sitting over here. You can see the part so far, as well as the, and now the fuel lines are about to all come off as one nest. Then I'm going to install this beautiful injector, which is going to go in this position right here, which is not seating for me and it's bleeding um, exhaust fumes up into my ceiling. Um, and yeah, it's just not just not being held down correctly. The way Cummins designed this, you need to take off the uh, air intake manifold to get to the nuts for the fuel line, but you can't get to the nuts for the, or to the bolts for the air intake manifold until the fuel line's off. So it's sort of a catch-22. Um, but I'm proud of myself and here goes nothing. Let's see if this thing is ready to come off. It's still stuck. There we go. So one fuel line assembly. Oh my gosh, Richie. Yeah, it's a good time. Oh my goodness. Yep. So now to finish it off here, I'm going to pull this injector. They're held on by these little um, clamps and that's where I'm getting all this fuel coming up. And I just want to thank everyone who had anything to do with this design for the ease of repair. Hi Robbie. Hi Peter. Hi Megan. Hi Adam. Hey, miss y'all, it's, it's all fun. So what happened in the middle of Lake Huron, 55 miles away from land in both directions? This engine uh, um, has six injectors, six cylinders, and um, we had a fuel leak out of the number three injector or not a fuel leak, the seal to the cylinder was actually cracked. And it had not been picked up on. Uh, mechanics had tightened it down, but had not replaced that um, O-ring. And so that was allowing air to escape in each combustion um, cycle, sending oil up onto the ceiling and, and or fuel debris up under the ceiling and all over the engine. Um, so uh, our friend Ed in Wyerton uh, originally pulled all of the injectors, checked the torque on all of them and reseated them, but he did not have a uh, fresh um, um, O-rings um, gaskets for, for, the, for the injectors. After Ed did his work, we still had a minor leak, even though he had torqued specification, because th there was a small hairline crack in that um, O-ring. So everything came off, injector out, new injector with new O-ring went in, and we were golden after that. So the end of that three week long uh, saga.
goes. Trying to see if he has the right size ratchet to remove the bow thruster um, propeller. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>